Good afternoon. Welcome to the weekly live stock market update. I'm Brown Fielding Group reporter Megan Grebner. With us as always to talk all things markets, University of Missouri, Scott Brown. Good afternoon, Scott. Good afternoon, Megan. Happy cattle on feed day to you. We'll also talk a little livestock slaughter and we'll check in on those weekly slaughter numbers. But to kick things off, let's recap what happened this week in the market. You know, on the cattle side this week, uh, live fed cattle were down about $1.80 on the week. Those feeder cattle markets were by and large mostly steady on the week. On the future side, the June live cattle futures contract closed up 85 cents and we saw a lot of strength in the uh, May feeder cattle contract. It was up $4.10. On the beef side, choice box beef prices were also up strong this week, up uh, about $8.60. That now puts them $37 above where they were a year ago. So strength across the board and all those components, uh, pretty pretty good week on the choice box beef side. Uh, hogs this week, barrels and gilts were up $1.30 this week. Uh, the June lean hog futures contract closed down $0.70. Cents, and we got about $1.20 gain in the pork cutout value as we got some uh, stronger belly prices on the week. Scott, as we take a look at uh, thinking specifically on the cash cattle side of things, any big surprise that we kind of pulled back a little bit this week after we saw such a strong week uh, a week ago and some of some of those auction markets were kind of uh, wild and crazy really a week ago? Yeah, no, it's, it's not surprising that uh, we're seeing some... Uh, a little bit of pullback. I don't think we're done finding perhaps record prices at some point down the road, uh, but just a little bit of, of catching up here, if you will. And when you see how good uh, in Choice Box Beef did this week, uh, it tells me there's probably some room for uh, additional push higher in, in fed cattle prices. So let's take a look at those slaughter numbers as we look uh, at this past week for both cattle and hogs. Yeah, so for the weakening uh, August, uh, sorry, April 22nd, uh, USDA told us a run of 622,000 out of cattle this week. That is 9,000 head more than where we were a week ago, but down 32,000 head from where we were a year ago. And on the hog side, a run of 2.459 million head of hogs this week. That's 30,000 more than we ran last week and 83,000 more than we ran a year ago. And as we take a look at those year-to-date comparisons, uh, still, still kind of running behind on the cattle side of things and a different story on the hog side. Yeah, that's right. You look year-to-date on the cattle side, Megan, now it's uh, down 3.1%. So we're continuing to see uh, that build more negative. And uh, on the hog side, we're 1.7% uh, above year-ago levels in terms of hog slaughter. Not a ton of reports for us this week to dig into, but two fairly important ones. As we take a look at livestock slaughter numbers, uh, let's specifically focus on beef production for start. Yeah, so if you look at March 2023 beef production, uh, 2.4 billion pounds of, of beef produced uh, in, in March. That was actually down 4.1% from uh, where we were a year ago. Uh, top combination of things there. So cattle slaughter in total uh, down 2.4%, steers down, cows down. Uh, we also saw dressed weights on cattle down as well, down 1.6%. Uh, when you look at the quarter, uh, so the first quarter of 2023, uh, 2.8 billion pounds of beef being produced, that's down nearly 3% uh, relative to a year ago. One of the one thing we were looking at specifically was going, uh, kind of focusing on that beef cow slaughter number. Uh, how is it stacking up compared to where we were a year ago, but then also kind of that five-year average? Yeah, so if you look at uh, beef cow slaughter for the first three months, uh, we're down uh, 90,000 head from where we were the uh, uh, first quarter of a year ago. That's down 9.4%, Megan, so, so lower. So um, certainly different than where we were in 2022. However, when you look at it relative to that, uh, 2017 to 2021 average, uh, we continue to run well above that, although getting closer, uh, I, I guess for me, slaughter is running high enough that uh, probably tells me we're not doing a lot to build the herd uh, yet at this point from a, a cow slaughter standpoint. On the hog side of things, uh, how does that story stack up? Yeah, so pork production, uh, two point, uh, 
1.49 billion pounds of pork, so more pork produced in March than we produced uh, beef. That's 1.3% above a year ago. Uh, although hog dress rates were down a half a percent, uh, hog slaughter being up nearly two, uh, ended up with, again, pork production at 1.3 for the quarter. Pork production 2.4% above uh, year ago levels as hog slaughter has been running 3.1% uh, above year ago. It definitely is not any shortage of uh, pork right now. Yeah, that's true. And even though we've been talking about a breeding herd that's by and large been sideways, a little bit of productivity gains is continuing to give us more pork out there. Maybe not what we need and what's been some lower prices uh, on the hog side of the equation. Big report today, cattle on feed numbers. As we take a look at those, how did we stand up April 1 of 2023 compared to April 1st of 2022? Yeah, so we're actually 95.6% of a year ago when you look at the April 1 on feed numbers. Um, so although that's below year ago levels, uh, that actually came in above the uh, upper end of the pre-report estimate of 95.4. So may maybe not quite as positive a news out of this report as, as some were expecting. Um, when you look at the rest of those numbers out of that on feed report, uh, placements in March really gets uh, your attention. Uh, the average pre-report guess was 95.2% of a year ago. The report actually showed 99.4%, so also slightly outside the upper end of the pre-report estimates. So, um, again, maybe not uh, exactly as positive as we were hoping, uh, but still reminding us that the trend is lower. I know we uh, don't, uh, as we take a look at that too, we talked to cow slaughter, we also kind of take a look at that heifer percentage on feed. Um, I guess it's telling us a story that we're not quite ready fully to uh, start into any sort of expansion mode. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you go back to where we were in early 2015, we were talking about on feed being made up roughly of about 30 and a 31% of, of heifers at its low. So when we were building a uh, smaller percentage, as we've looked uh, here at the, the latest report we have, we're now at 38.7. Uh, we've been kind of north of 38% for uh, really since late 2019, uh, we, we've been running 38% plus. So the report certainly shows us that we're also not holding back heifers. So you look at both what we're doing in cow slaughter and, and these on feed from a heifer percentage standpoint, to, to me, it's continuing to say not a lot of building. Even though you and I hear a lot about weather being better, uh, I think there's still a lot of concern about what kind of rains happen uh, this summer that maybe are keeping folks a little bit at bay at uh, jumping to expand herds too quickly. It'll definitely be interesting to see what happens weather-wise as we look into some of those more uh, corn and, and bean and, and even alfalfa growing months to see how that kind of stacks up to tell a bigger picture for the rest of the year. Yeah, that's right. Um, whether we're talking corn or, or hay or alfalfa, any of those, all this is gonna matter a lot. And the story we may tell this fall could be really profitable or it could be really squeezed uh, just depending on where we end up. I feel like that's a good reminder to slip in a risk management <laughs> comment uh, for producers uh, for the big picture for 2023 and beyond. Yeah, that's right. I, I keep saying just because we've been going higher on prices and the anticipation is we keep going higher, it does. It, to me, that gives us opportunities to decide when to limit that downside risk. And again, I can do it relatively inexpensively uh, in, in many cases today. Just think about how much risk your operation can uh, manage but before you want to let somebody else have that risk. Scott, as we look ahead to next week, I think we're going to talk a little bit on the demand side of things uh, as you look at those reports. That's right. We get cold storage here early next week, Megan, and then we finish next week uh, with Restaurant Performance Index. Scott, it's always great to see you. We'll see you again next Friday. Have a great weekend, Megan. You too. To have our weekly livestock market update delivered your email box every Saturday morning, go to brownfieldagnews.com and for a daily rundown of what happened in the market, Make sure to check out John Perkins' Market Minute. Have a great weekend. I'm Megan Grebner for Brownfield.